and you when you run the proform gasket because it's cut out in a circle it actually leaves just enough room for the power valve and not much else moving on from the metering block and the fuel bowl we're going to go ahead and remove the secondary side of this carburetor basically it'll be the same thing as we've seen on the primary side so i'm going to go ahead and take it apart and then we'll jump on the next thing after that all right guys so i just finished breaking down the secondary side so and i want to show you guys a couple differences that we're looking at from the secondary side to the primary side so the first thing you guys are going to notice that there is no power valve here in fact instead we have a power valve block off what we have here is basically a blank power valve or a power valve plug and what this does is it's just taking of the place of the stock power valve. So you can see that there's no orifices. It does have a gasket. And as you guys can see, there are power valve restrictor channels. But if you look very closely, these power valve restrictor channels are actually completely closed, which means that even if you were to put a regular power valve on here, you're not going to get any flow through it. In fact, if you go ahead and grab the main body, and take a quick look at it. We're gonna look at the primary side first, and then I'm gonna show you the secondary side. So the primary side has a hole for the power valve, and if we look at the secondary side, there is a place where the hole is supposed to be, but it looks like there's a lead plug here. What that's telling me is that if you want to open this channel up, you can, you just clean it off and run a drill bit through it and you'll be able to open up this channel again. But from the factory, the secondary side is completely plugged. The good news is that if you want to add it, you could add it. The bad news is that it's going to take you a little bit of work. Continuing on with the metering block, if we flip it back around, you're going to see that this metering block actually has the jet extensions where my other metering block did not. So if we go ahead and grab the fuel bowl of that side, you see that it has these notches just like we talked about before. Typically, you're going to want them in the rear. You're not really going to use them in the front. You can use them in the front, but it's actually really not necessary. So what the extensions are for is, let's say your carburetor is in this orientation and you do a wheelie or you launch really hard, the car is going to do this, the carburetor is going to lift up, which means all the fuel is going to go to the back. What these extensions will do is that they'll act like a straw and try to keep the jets submerged in the fuel so you don't run lean on the secondary side. It's more like a high horsepower hot rod thing. You don't really necessarily need them on a street car. It doesn't hurt to have them, and the race series of these carburetors come with them factory installed, so it's a nice upgrade. To remove the jet extensions, typically you need a 516 socket or nut driver or wrench. They're usually not on that tight, so you can just really just slip it on, put your driver on it, crack them loose, and then unscrew them. If for whatever reason it is super difficult, you might want to reconsider pulling them out because somebody might have cross threaded them and you might not be able to put them back in so in case that happens you're going to have to figure out a plan b so if they're fighting you on the way out you know what just leave them in there because you really don't want any problems luckily i did not cross thread these when last time i pulled them out so everything's all good if you look inside there should be nothing in here so we're all good there as well that pretty much covers the secondary side. Let's go ahead and pull the base plate off of the main body. Before we move on to the main body, actually, I do want to show you something first. So on the secondary side, I actually had something that's called a 50cc accelerator pump. From the top, the left and the right accelerator pump diaphragm covers look exactly the same. But if we go ahead and do a side by side comparison, you guys are going to notice that this side is a little bit taller. And if we go ahead and put the screwdriver here, you can tell that it's actually this much taller compared to the standard one. So this one's called a 50cc accelerator pump, and this one's called a 30cc accelerator pump. The diaphragms themselves that actually drop inside are different as well. So this one, as you guys can see, significantly taller than this one. This one has a little bit of wear in it, so it's actually smushed down. We're gonna go ahead and replace this. But typically, they're supposed to be nice and tall, and elastic so you should be able to move it around it should be pretty soft if it's super stiff and it doesn't want to retain its shape then go ahead and toss it get a new one the difference between this one and the one i just threw over here is that this one is e85 safe and this one is not this one eventually e85 is going to eat it wear it out and it'll slowly degrade and you won't be able to use it anymore the third thing that you need to see about this is actually the spring and the spring height. So you have two sets of springs, but not only that, one spring is actually in a cone shape 
and the other spring is actually in a square or rectangle shape. And that's because the tops of the diaphragms are different sizes. So this one is about the size of a quarter, and this one is about the size of a nickel. If you try to put the wrong spring in here, it's going to sit outside of the diaphragm and it'll probably poke a hole through it. If you try to run the cone spring in the smaller diaphragm, it'll fit inside, but you're gonna have so much preload up against this that it, it'll probably coil by whenever you try to activate the accelerator pump. When you're taking it apart, keep an eye out to make sure somebody didn't accidentally mix up these springs as well. Moving on to the main body, the base plate to the main body is only held on by six bolts. It's actually pretty easy to separate. You have individual components on the base plate and we're gonna look at them one by one. But first, let's go ahead and separate these two pieces. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six bolts right here. So we're gonna set those off to the side. One thing I do wanna show you is that look what E85 actually does to these bolts. It actually leaves them very crusty. And if we wipe off the crust, there's a lot of oxidation on these bolts. So when somebody says E85 is corrosive, it means E85 is corrosive. This bolt used to look like this. And because this one has been in direct contact with E85 for most of its life, that's what it's starting to look like. If you just keep using it, eventually it'll get to the point where this bolt will no longer be serviceable. So for the record, E85 is corrosive. Now let's go ahead and separate the main body from the base plate. That one should just require a little bit of force if it's stuck. There we go. But most of the time it just pops right off. So there is a gasket in between these two pieces. Sometimes it'll get stuck to the base plate and sometimes it'll get stuck to the main body. I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove it off of the main body. So starting up this and tour. I got most of the gasket off. Normally a razor blade will make quick work of this, but I really just want to show you one thing on this bottom side. So on this bottom side, everything is silver except for right here. And that's because I added this plug right here when I converted this carb to a blow through carburetor. This is the plug for the vacuum channel that goes to the primary power valve. So as long as this is plugged right here, this chamber right here will not have vacuum. If you guys remember that we talked about the secondary side, how the secondary side was factory blocked off, well I blocked off the primary and that's because a boost activated power valve does not run off a of vacuum, it actually runs off of boost pressure and vacuum will actually close the diaphragm if it stays open. I'm going to jump over to the base plate real quick because it has a little bit to do with the same thing that we're talking about here. And as you guys can see, the opposite is now true here. So everything is black except for this brass part right here. Well, there's a check valve in here. So when you have a backfire through the carburetor, it won't blow out the rubber diaphragm inside of the power valve. So this is the bottom of the carburetor. And if you have a backfire through the carburetor, it'll go up through this orifice. It'll go up through this brass plug. Then it'll climb up through the main body right here. And then the pressure will come out through this hole right here, right at the diaphragm. And typically, if your diaphragm is fairly new, you don't have much to worry about. But after the diaphragm has a couple cycles on it, you're going to run into issues and a backfire could blow out the power valve. Once that happens, it's just going to be dumping raw fuel right into your intake. Car is going to be running super rich, so keep an eye out for that. There's really nothing to rebuild on the base plate itself. The Proform base plate comes with stainless steel throttle blades and an idle adjustment on both the primary and the secondary side, but none of that is actually a wear item. The only wear item, quote unquote, that you'll have are these cams for the accelerator pump circuit. And these are nylon or plastic cams that ride up along this ledge right here. And this is what actually opens and closes your power valve. So if we go ahead and set this here, when the arm is sitting right here on this pink cam, as you accelerate, it's gonna bring this arm down. So the bigger the cam, the more pump shot it's gonna shoot out. You're gonna notice that the back one is a lot bigger than the front one, and that's because the front one, like I mentioned before, is a 30cc, and the back one is a 50cc. So it needs to run at a different ratio. If you run a 30cc pump cam, on a 50 cc pump, you're only going to get 30 cc worth of shot versus you run a 50 cc pump cam on a 30 cc diaphragm, 
then it's just gonna bottom out and you're not gonna have any pump shot. So you've gotta make sure the spring, the diaphragm, the diaphragm housing, and the pump cam are all the same and they all match for their respective size. Some people have problems with their accelerator pump not working and a lot of times that could be the problem. Somebody has the wrong component in there and something is seized up. So when you're tearing this apart, keep your eyes open for all of this. Jumping back to the main body of this carburetor, there's only a few things left and the whole carburetor will be completely disassembled. So up on top you have these brass plugs. These are the high speed and low speed air screws. Some carburetors, in fact most carburetors on the market, do not have removable or replaceable bleed screws. So for the most part you don't really have to worry about that. We're just going to check to make sure that when you spray carb cleaner through here, fluid comes out through there and we'll go over that in the next video but really the most important thing is to check this right here well, let's go ahead and remove these two and see what's under there so on the race series carburetor it'll come with high flow screws for the accelerator pump nozzles and I'll show you what those look like but in order to remove them you'll need a number four allen or a t25 will also remove them depending on how tight they are so we're gonna go ahead and remove these screws. So the high flow screws have these holes that'll feed right through here. And then they have little channels on the bottom. The regular screws are not hollow and they do not have these chamfers and they don't have these holes. So by having this extra stuff, you can get more volume through the pump and the fuel should travel faster. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the primary side and the secondary side screws. Be careful because sometimes there's a gasket stuck to the bottom of these screws. As you guys can see, the nozzles actually got stuck to the main body. So I'm just gonna lean them over a little bit and pull them off. And surprise, surprise, both gaskets that were on these uh, accelerator pump nozzles have ripped. And so we're, they're gonna have to be replaced and half of it's over here. So I'll do that with a razor blade. I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff with the razor blade in the next video. There's nothing to rebuild here. You just have to make sure these guys are clean. There, like I mentioned, there is a paper gasket on the bottom, but there is a metal gasket here on top. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove it so you guys can see what it looks like. Sometimes it'll get stuck to the screw and sometimes it'll get stuck to the nozzle. So if you don't have this gasket in place, when you go to activate the accelerator pump, the fuel might actually bypass the screw and shoot through the top instead of shooting out through the nozzle itself. So keep an eye out for these gaskets, make sure they're there and make sure you have a gasket on the bottom because if the gasket's not there on the bottom, same thing, instead of shooting out through the nozzle, it's just gonna dribble out the sides. If there's any kind of leakage on either of those two gaskets, your pump shot's actually gonna get weaker because now there's more places for the fuel to spread out and so your pump shot will tend to be a little bit weaker than if the bottom seal and the top seal were working properly. You'll either have one or two accelerator pump nozzles and that depends it, whether or not you're a mechanical secondary or vacuum secondary carburetor. Vacuum secondaries will only have one nozzle, mechanical secondary carburetors will have two nozzles. So this is a mechanical secondary carburetor, so this one has two nozzles. Now underneath these two nozzles, there's going to be two needles. So I'm going to go ahead and carefully flip this over and see if the needles just fall out. There's one and there's two. So in this carburetor, we have stainless steel needles right here. And what these do is that all they do is they sit inside the main body and their job is to act as a little bit of a regulator. So in order to make sure the whole system is primed or charged, make sure that these needles go back in. Now the only thing I've got left with is a bunch of dirty parts. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and clean everything up and then we're going to reassemble it. So I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.